So today we're going to be talking about selective color and how to separate subjects from their backgrounds by identifying the color and making everything else black and white. For today's project, we're going to be taking a look at five different images. We have the eggs, flowers, the shoes, umbrellas, and the umbrella with the rain boots and rain jacket. And we're looking to select out these vibrant colors, separating them from the backgrounds. We're going to start out by taking a look at the egg image. This process is very quick, just a matter of making sure that you're focusing on the details, making sure you're not missing elements. Because we have multiple objects, we wouldn't necessarily want to go with the subject select. It will do well to select out some, but obviously we see that it's not selecting out the other egg. If I do want to add in an additional egg, I can go over to my quick selection tool, click and drag over this egg. It may pick up a little piece of the cloth or fabric. So I can always hold down Alt or Option to deselect out an area, but just be specific in the area that you're trying to deselect. If I want to reselect an area, I can always click and drag over, not holding down anything, and it'll add into the selection. Once we have the selected area, we can see the dotted lines appearing around the image. You have two methods that you can do. We can first invert the selection. Inverting the selection, we can go onto our contextual taskbar and click on Invert Selection or I can go up to select and inverse, and that would switch the selection from the eggs to around the eggs on the fabric area. The other method is going over to the adjustments panel first, and then clicking on the black and white adjustments layer. Either way, we will be using the black and white adjustments layer to separate our subjects from the background. So the first method, we can go down to invert, click invert, and we see that the selection goes around the outside of the image. When I click on the black and white layer mask, we see that the eggs are now separated from the background or the fabric, allowing the eggs to stand out and pop out on the screen. Again, if I wanted to take a look at the other method, I'm going to step back. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z. With the egg selected, if I were to go right over to the adjustments panel and click on black and white, it would turn my eggs black and white. Obviously, we don't want this. So if I simply hit Control or Command I, it inverts my selection so that the eggs become the visual color. And that's all we're looking to do with creating out select a color, having the objects stand out from the background. So if we're looking to save this work, we would save it as a PNG or JPEG for submission. Then we can take a look at our flowers. With our flowers, we're going to focus on making three flowers stand out. The left one, the right top, and the right bottom. Again, we can take a look at seeing what happens when we do the sec select a subject, but there are so many flowers it's going to select out the too much of the image. So instead, I'm going to use the quick selection tool to click and drag in the specific flowers that I want. And though it may seem perfect at first, if you notice the details, it might pick up some different stems or different parts of other flowers. So again, we can always hold down Alt or Option to deselect out an area that I don't want. So that's not part of the selection. Again, if I want to add in additional selection, just use your cursor, slide over to the object, click and drag inside that object to add it into the selection. Finally, we'll get the third flower down at the bottom. Obviously, we can see that it is picking up some elements of this pink flower behind it. So just understand that we will have to do some modification to clean this area up in a little bit. So if I wanted to start making modifications now, I could take a look closer up, zooming in. And we can see that we have some of this pink flower I don't want. Again, I can hold down Alt or Option, click and drag to deselect out that area. Or I could specifically go in with the polygon elastic tool, hold down Alt, click point by point to draw around the area that I don't want so that it doesn't get added into our selection. This might be a little bit more tedious, but it will give us a little bit better accuracy overall.
And even though I do it on just these two parts, I may miss a couple parts along the way. So taking a look at all my three flowers selected out, again, you have the option of either using the invert now, or I can go up to adjustments, black and white adjustments panel, and then hit control or command I to invert the selection so we're seeing just these three flowers. Again, if I'm taking a closer look though, a lot of these need a little adjustments, cleaning up some areas. So I'm going to go over to my eraser tool. With my eraser tool, I want to make sure that my foreground color is set to white. I can adjust the size of the brush with the right or left bracket. And understand that the eraser tool would be erasing out or providing more color in areas. So this will allow us to bring back some color, but if we're looking to cover up some color, we would actually want to go either to the paintbrush or go down to the eraser and have black on the foreground. Just to keep consistency, I recommend go to the paintbrush, make sure your white is on top, and then I can paint areas of gray back into the areas that I don't want color. So again, this is a tedious process of just cleaning up the little details. making sure that we don't leave any of the orange excess or other elements that we aren't part of the actual flower. So I can take a look and make sure I have the other flowers as well. A couple of areas that I might want to clean up or make sure that are turned gray, separating out from the flowers. But once we have those flowers separated, showing their color, separating themselves from the other flowers, we can then save this again as a PNG or JPEG and move on to the next image. Our next image, we just have a person wearing shoes with the camera next to it. We want to focus on maintaining the color of the shoes. So I can use the quick selection tool. Understand that if I do a select subject, it might select out elements of all of the legs. Does a good job overall of selecting out some of the shoes, but doesn't get all the little details. So we might have to t uh, touch it up. Also, I don't want to have any of the legs, so I may want to consider just going to the quick selection tool, clicking and dragging to select out as much of the shoes as I can. So I'm not going to look to select on the skin itself. Just take your time to make sure that we're getting accurately around the shoe. You can adjust the size of the brush to make sure you get the details. I'm also going to try to avoid selecting out on this leather rope uh, strap of the camera. But once I have these areas selected, I can see if I have the overall piece ready for inversion or turning to black and white. So when I click on it, yes, they turn the shoes black and white. We can see that we're missing a couple areas. I can always go over to my eraser tool or paintbrush, paint areas back in. Or if I want to invert my selection first, Commander Control I. See how much better the shoes now stand out from the grass that is now gray, away from the skin tone of the legs, or looking at the camera now black and white. These shoes very much pop off the image. But little details that we need to clean up. So we're going to look to bring back these elements of red that are inside the shoe. Or making sure that we 
hide out some areas of whether it's the skin tone in between the laces here. You can paint some areas of gray back into the skin tone. Or if I zoom in closer, I can get this strap that accidentally has some brown here. So with a small enough brush, I can click and drag to make this gray again. But it's just focusing on those little details that are going to really bring this out. If it misses any melons, just make sure to go through those areas adding them into the selection. Any areas of grass, you may want to switch between the paintbrush. So the paintbrush, again, is foreground and white, and I'm painting the gray back into the image. It can be a tedious process, but we're just looking overall to get the subjects, the big areas of color, separated from the backgrounds. So again, I can go up to File, Save a Copy, or File, Export, save it as a PNG, and you would look to upload it onto your project for submission. But understanding this process, you can easily apply this to your own photography. Our next image, we just have a number of umbrellas. We're going to look to select out just the red umbrellas, maintaining their color while everything else goes to gray. Again, if I were to use the to select the subject, it might select out all the umbrellas or different color umbrellas. We're looking to specifically just get the red ones. So I'm going to deselect and focus on just getting the red. I can click and drag through each of the red umbrellas. As I go through, I may realize that there are a couple little areas where I see areas of blue appearing from the sky or it might have missed a strap so I might have to zoom in or add in parts of the umbrella umbrella that weren't selected so just reducing down my selection it will do a great job of recognizing the parts of the umbrella that we need to add into the selection Zooming back out, just adding in the last two parts of the umbrellas that we see. Once I have all the, the red umbrellas selected, again, we can either hit inverse first or wait till after we hit the black and white adjustments and then hit control I to invert my selection and reveal just the red umbrellas. Clean up any details that you see, any color that is seeping through that accidentally got added in. Then you can save that and upload it as part of the assignment. Our final image is the picture of rain boots and rain jacket with the umbrella. Again, if I were doing select a subject, it would likely select out the legs of our subject as we see here. It does a good job of recognizing the umbrella but little details just need to be cleaned up and we need to eliminate out the leg selection. So I can go over to my quick selection tool, click and drag to select out the yellow area of the rain jacket. See that it picked up some of the green in the sleeve, so I can hold down Alt or Option to deselect some areas. Then we'll get the rain boots. I want to deselect out an area, just focus on the little details that might have accidentally got selected. And finally, we'll add in the big umbrella, just click and, click and drag through the object with the quick selection tool. Does a great job of recognizing the area. Again, little details, maybe getting little nubs on the end of the brush or deselecting out the fence, making sure that's not part of the selection.
So once I have all those areas selected out, again, we can go over to our adjustments. You see removing out the color with the black and white adjustments panel. I actually want to invert so I can hit Command or Control I. I see that I accidentally left the finger, so I'm going to paint that back in just so it does not have the color. So with selective color, it's all about revealing those bold, bright colors, separating them from the more muted tones of backgrounds. <coughs> You'll go one image at a time to reveal out those pictures, and you can see how cool the result can be. I hope you enjoyed it.